are three main reasons, I think, why SPE Offshore Europe is really important for this region. First, it reinforces Aberdeen status as a global energy hub. Uh, secondly, uh, contacts are made, deals are done, contracts are signed, which provides huge benefits to our supply chain. And thirdly, and possibly most importantly, is the overall economic impact. Over the 50 years, we've had tens and tens of thousands of visitors to the event, putting uh, hundreds of millions of pounds into the regional economy, whether that be uh, through transport providers, the venue, uh, hotels, restaurants, bars, and other suppliers. And that, uh, uh, as a combination, makes it a really, really powerful event to bring to the city every two years. I think, I think it'll be very important because because it always is. I, I think the, the challenge that we've got as we try and navigate the pretty incredible uh, financial times uh, that we're seeing uh, is that um, you know the energy sector has a pivotal role to play in a number of ways. And I think the, uh, the offshore Europe being here will allow uh, those debates to be had uh, and some of those issues to be raised. I think it's about the uh, quality of the event, the organisation of it, the, the exhibitors um, and the people that are there. The audience that uh, attends it uh, is a strong audience, it's the right people, it's, it's, it's decision makers in the sector, uh, so the conversations that are had there are, are the right conversations with the right people, hopefully leading to positive outcomes. So RGU's excellent uh, Making the Switch report uh, demonstrates the, uh, the size of the prize and also what will happen if we get uh, this transition uh, wrong as a region. Currently, uh, 45,000 people are directly employed in the energy sector in the northeast of Scotland. If we fail, if this simply becomes a place that used to be Europe's oil and gas capital, uh, that will decline by an eye-watering 17,000 by 2030 that will have a catastrophic uh, impact on the regional economy here. On the upside, if we do get the transition right and, and Aberdeen can become not just a place which is globally renowned for oil and gas, but becomes a significant renewable energy player, which we think we can do, uh, we can actually increase those number of jobs from 45,000 today to 54,000, which would be a remarkable growth in a short period of time and really demonstrate that uh, this region is helping to drive uh, towards net zero. I hope it gives a platform for us to have a more reasoned debate. Um, in a letter that the Chamber wrote in December uh, 2021 uh, to both our governments uh, in the uh, um, aftermath of COP26, uh, we said that actually the, the, the debate had been characterised into goodies and baddies, black and white, and it simply isn't as simple as that. The whole definition of the phrase transition is a change of state over time. And those people that believe we can move from A to Z in one leap, I'm afraid are mistaken. But that's what we hear. Those are, those are the messages that the media is repeating. Those are the things that politicians are listening to and making decisions on. Um, a recent survey told us that 85% of people in the UK believe that we should have as much of our um, energy requirements through oil and gas as we still require it um, produced domestically. You know, why would we want to import oil and gas as we still need it with a much higher carbon footprint, uh, with a much bigger effect on, on jobs um, than, than actually producing it ourselves because that in turn gives us the platform to invest in energy transition. It means the skills are here, the people are here and we're actually producing that domestically. So I think, I think the, 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 the conference needs to change the debate to, so that the, the general public understand that we are in a transition and it's really important that we get it right, otherwise we will miss the opportunity. I think they want to view the opportunities that the sector can bring. If they care about the environment, if they care about our net zero ambitions, then actually why not be part of the solution? And if you come into the energy sector, and you're part of that, then you can actually 
be part of that journey, you can actually make net zero happen. So I think we need to consider that coming in uh, and being part of the sector is uh, it's not being part of the problem, it's actually being part of the solution. polarised view actually, so my early um, experiences of offshore Europe were back in the late 80s and early 90s. I worked at the Press and Journal who were one of the event partners, uh, and so a typical day would mean a very, very early start. It would mean very, very dirty hands because we had thousands and thousands of sponsored copies of the of the newspaper that were being distributed to stands and to, and to delegates. Uh, so that was part one of the day. Part two of the day was slightly more enjoyable in that uh, actually some of the stands uh, were uh, were, were, were very uh, forthcoming in offering a sociable drink or two uh, and we used to go home with huge goodie bags uh, full of merchandise that we'd collected from the various stands. So from that in the, the 80s and early 90s, my next um, experience of offshore Europe was in 2017 uh, because I'd been away in the other northeast of England for 25 years working. Uh, so when I came to that one, wow, what a difference. Uh, technological advances, the, um, the shift in the scale and um, substance of the stands, of the demonstrations, of the debate, everything had moved on hugely in, in, in that quarter of a century. Uh, and, and it was a really quite a stark um, um, sort of uh, contrast from those, from those early days uh, to, to, to just how much the technologies and the, uh, the event itself had moved on in that period. So I think I'm kind of hoping for two outcomes uh, from uh, from offshore Europe uh, being here. Uh, I think first of all, it's, it's a, to really reinforce the point that Aberdeen has a pivotal role to play, uh, not just in the energy security and supply that the nation needs today to keep the lights on, but also as a significant global uh, player in developing uh, renewable energy technologies. That is the prize that is there for Aberdeen if our governments and our businesses is do the right things and make good decisions now, that's, that's the prize that, that we can see for the next 50 years and, and beyond. And I think the other thing that I'd, I'd quite like to take away from that is that the uh, Chamber of Commerce uh, Business Breakfast, which will launch the event on day one, uh, will be remembered as the biggest and best in the 50 years so far. Interestingly enough, the last um, business breakfast to launch Offshore Europe that we had uh, was missing one quite important thing, and that was an Offshore Europe. So we, we had actually um, planned for the, for the February uh, Offshore Europe, so we had arranged the business breakfast with some really, really high quality speakers. Uh, we had uh, over 200 delegates who'd signed up uh, to attend, but then restrictions that were still ongoing meant that we couldn't have the event but we could actually go ahead under the regulations at that time with the breakfast. So we wrote to all the delegates and said, two choices, we cancel or we go ahead. And 99% said, for goodness sake, go ahead. So we had a brilliant offshore Europe breakfast without an offshore Europe. So this time, again, the, the speaker lineup is coming together really, really strongly. Uh, we're really hopeful that some of the uh, the key messages that, that I've said earlier in this interview that we've talked about will be able to be rehearsed um, at that event, which is, as I say, people then leave that and go into the hall uh, for the first time. Uh, so um, I think we, we would probably be have, have around 300 places. All of our recent breakfasts have sold out, so make sure you get your place booked early.